Many has been going maxi for the last few years. Now they've cut back the other way with something that is less and they hope therefore more. Let's drive the 2012 Mini Cooper Coupe and check the tech. Now a Mini Cooper Coupe is still a Mini Cooper hardtop from like here on down. It's the stuff above the belt line where it gets all different. This windshield's kicked back, I don't know, 10 or 15 degrees more raked. The roof is curved and smaller. Kind of reminds me of one of those little souvenir NFL helmets you used to get at the gas station with a fill up. Here's a power wing that goes up at highway speeds or if you're bored you can use that little chrome toggle and do it yourself. A uh, hatchback here that lifts up. Two seats, not four. In many ways, this is kind of like the Audi TT for those who want more quirk for less cash. Let's get inside. Now, when you get in the coupe, everything's pretty much familiar if you know minis at all. Same dashboard, same goofy, bulbous, Pixar rounded stuff going on. However, we have one of the key things you need if you want to go CNET style, and that is this mini connected package. That gives you a six and a half inch LCD inside the dinner plate. It's not touch, it uses the world's smallest controller, giving you access to Facebook, Twitter, web radio, Google search, so many ways to die. And you also get this dynamic music thing, which changes music based on your driving speed. Yeah, young males should have that. That'd be great for insurance rates. The GPS navigation I'm showing you here, that's an optional extra 750 on top of the two grand to get this connected package. And it works through your iPhone in a very nice way. Notice how when I go to my phone, I get a really nice interface using iPod out. They really suck up a lot of the Apple interface, the cover art, don't just give you some crunchy looking text readout. Now back here where there used to be a couple of back seats, now we've got sort of this bigger than a bread box. Eh, quite a bit bigger than a bread box, cargo area, but no seats as you can see. You do have a structural cross member here that doesn't appear in the Cooper hardtop. That's going to give this guy extreme rigidity back here. This is a little pass through deal, which will let you put, I don't know, maybe a set of really short kid skis through to the front, but there's not much room lengthwise on this guy. So you're not going to go buy a Billy bookcase at Ikea. But to my mind, it's ideal for this. A litter box, and it's the perfect cat door. Under the hood, the Cooper Coupes have the same engine and powertrain and transmissions as a Cooper hardtop, whether it's base, S, or the John Cooper works like we have here. Now underway, an interesting little bit of psychology happens. As I mentioned, this is the same powertrain you'd get in a hardtop, whether it's a John Cooper works, an S, or a standard or base car. But because as you walk up to this car and get this sporty image, as you walk in and enter it and start it, your mind plays tricks on you. You expect it to be sportier, lighter on its feet, more nimble, and it kind of feels that way, though I know I'm imagining things. The only thing that would make that possibly true are slightly sportier suspension pieces on coupes versus hardtops. Just a little difference, not dramatically so. And as I mentioned, this big old cross brace back here does really stiffen up what's already a short, stiff car. The blind spots are a bit of an issue. You don't have any significant windows back here in the quarters to look out of. Uh, they do give you these quarter windows that are unique to the coupe, but your passenger's head or the head rest are right in the way, so they may as well not be there as far as I can tell. Luckily, this car is so short that a quick glance out the mirror or out the side window gives you a good view. It's not the most claustrophobic car I've ever driven. Now here's how I would do a Cooper Coupe. I wouldn't get the base model. That's like getting a really good, solid, practical Cooper Coupe, which is an oxymoron. Instead, I'd at least go for the Cooper S. We have a John Cooper Works here, but you can pass on that. Get the S for about 25.3, then add the connected package for two grand, another 750 if you want the nav, and you're in good shape for about 28,000. 